is write two sources. Two sources. That's number one. And then turn your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 7 from verse 13 and 14. There are two sources. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the, is the way that leadeth to destruction. Another word in the Greek for this destruction is death. And many there be which go thereat. Next verse. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life and few there be that find. Your source determines your strategy. Your source determines your model. Your source determines the outcome or the result of your endeavor. Because if you are going to stumble upon life, there is a way to life. If you are going to stumble upon life, if your goal is a ministry of life, just like that which Paul said his ministry was, then your approach will be influenced by your goal. Are you with me? I was invited to preach somewhere in South America. And that's a long way from home. Because if you go through South African Airlines, they'll take you to Johannesburg, that's five hours from Lagos. And then from Lagos to Sao Paulo is 10 hours, 30 minutes. That's a long, long way from home. And, and it happens to be that there is this restaurant, a woman from Enugu. May God bless Enugu. <laughs> a woman from Enugu, pioneer, a restaurant somewhere so most Africans will find themselves there you you just have to end up there because <laughs> in my own view there's no food anywhere outside Nigeria so you must end up in the Enugu woman's kitchen so that kitchen becomes became a rallying point for preachers you will you know that this preacher came at the time you were around and i saw preachers are you with me that boast about international ministry they came to the city not because they had an invitation they were they are hawking for preaching opportunities say can i so when 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 people arrive at that Restaurant, then you say, uh, Do I have Wednesday there? Do I? Meanwhile, if the goal is life, there is a pathway that will lead to it. And, and the great one says, Only few find it. Is it because this path is so hidden? May the Lord help us in Jesus name. Now you need to run an inquiry on the source of what you are doing. Because if the source is the tree of life. It will lead you through a constricted path. The government of God is going to, is going to be responsible for your seasons. For your appearances. For your manifestation. The government of God can conceal you in the wilderness. Of no visibility for 17 years so that several deposits pump stations of liability that have been built around your soul will be adequately immobilized so that the possibility of those infrastructure that have been built in your life by reason of experiences and exposures that you have had that are likely to be key points of exploitation from the kingdom of darkness God will begin to work on those things and it will take 17 years 
for you to be totally purged from their power. Meanwhile, there is an option of wanting to showcase yourself because God is too slow. <laughs> he will allow you to do it. But the point is that at the end of the day, it will no longer be life. Hallelujah. I remember. Are you with me? I remember a minister called me and said, I heard you traveled here. I said, yes. He said, can I open one door for him? I don't think that is what you need to ask for. Because John the Baptist was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth to Israel. There is a government approach. There is, there is a Jesus approach for visibility. Are you with me? If it is true that what you intend to manifest is a ministry of life, then this is the way to operate in the ministry of life. There are going to be scars on your life that is as a result of God's dealings. Uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 1 He said the former three times Have I made all Theophilus Of all that Jesus began Both to do and to teach So the teaching ministry of Jesus Was founded on a doing And that doing That Luke was speaking about In the book of Acts Is living under the weight Of the government of God that means Jesus wakes up, according to the Bible, goes into a solitary place a great while before day, and he begins to pray. And the reason for that prayer is because he wants to know what the Father is doing that day. He downloads it. And then his preoccupation that day becomes doing that which is the Father's will, which he has secured in the place of prayer. He practiced that for 30 years before he was released into teaching ministry. The Bible says that if if life then we already know the prescription of that and through a narrow navigation tributary because the new Jerusalem that we just saw one of the elements it is concealed it is it is the first thing you will find in that civilization at the walls which is its separation is separated from and it is like something that is available. Hallelujah. There's a way you want to talk. Because it is common to talk like that. If you, if you talk like that, you are likely to move the crowd. You got that one from... Hallelujah. It is not likely to have the capacity to carry life. The container will be too weak for the weight of life. The government of God for 30 years his preoccupation was to find out what was on God's heart and then what he do is the Holy Ghost that trains you to operate like that when you recognize his authority ministry <laughs> so you might find Jesus teaching him you will not have the authority he has because the things he picked up on that constricted part which is the basis for which he has found favor with God and the presence of God accompanies his prayer those lessons of intimacy that he calls with his father becomes the thing that places the authority of God on his ministry and hallelujah so the first point to consider the options you want to operate from the pedestal of life you must look into the sea you must ask yourself who sent you how what are the encounters that you have what are the confirmations that are calling on your life and just in case there's a valid calling on your life what you are doing today what are the strategies that the Holy Spirit unveils current strategy as your means of fulfilling that ministry? If the source private 
it's not uncommon you are operating Babylon because Babylon is common Babylon is in the marketplace are you with me is concerned about the source of things and I know this by John chapter 8 verse 44 John of things this is just your father he will do he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there was no truth in him when he speaketh a lie he speaketh of his own his possession and possesses something that nobody else possesses and that is his art to lie are you with me the word of here ye are off is the word ek out of source so when jesus he doesn't see how beautiful the service runs impeccable the sound the balances blending of colors and all of that is not the object of his inspection he comes to inspect ek, source life sounds okay this style i'm using what is the source is it window shopping or jesus had something private to consider in concerned about the source another scripture for source is matthew chapter 15 verse 12 to 13 i'm not going to two principles first of all we have two sources principles in the book of romans chapter 8 there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus he didn't stop there principles who walk not after the flesh it means you can be in christ jesus and you are operating the principles of the flesh you are not going to have the healing because you are using a different principle even though you are a different being i remember i was on campus and in 400 level we were so privileged two notable preachers on campus were given the same room is that not supposed to produce a revival? Hallelujah. Unfortunately for me, the other minister was more experienced in ministry than myself. So, I was naturally the student. And he was a teacher. So he tells me about his vast experience in ministry. One of those nights when he came for lectures, because when he wants to lecture me, he would lock the door so that there's no interference. Then he will now become serious. Then he came as a fornicate, but let no man catch you. You're not <laughs> if you, you see in that communication, the face posture is also communicating. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He, he will. <laughs> he said the day they catch you the oil will leave he's telling me by spirit that he has been when did you start sit down so part of the lecture was that make sure that your escapades are concealed in secret that's that's hallelujah you are not with me i say hallelujah some of you here have received this kind of lecture before so don't don't make it look as if I'm the only one that in another lecture he came and unveiled a sack he brought out a sack and as usual he becomes very serious he said this sack contains all the messages that I want to preach this year I've already prepared So if I want to preach, I'll just pick anyone at random. That would be the will of God. That that trans. I'll go and pray in tongues, and I release it. The principle, if what you want to dispense is life, the principles matter. Hallelujah. So John chapter fifteen, verse four and five he said abide in me 
and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me Jesus is saying if what you desire is to bear fruit unto life then you cannot avoid the principle of dependence Jesus modeled the example of utter obedience as the kingdom model for the Christian Adam modeled the principle of rebellion as the model for Babylon and that which is common are you still with me the principle that you operate with matters if you are going to be a custodian of life and there is something the measure of ministry is actually transformation are you with me the measure of ministry is what is transformation and it is only the Holy Ghost that can transform a man so if we are not having the merchandise of life transformation is going to be a far cry in our testimony people can come and testify about financial breakthrough and unbelievers can also have breakthroughs in that regard people will testify about vehicles that have been purchased Toyota Highlander hallelujah but you will not find testimonies of transformed life because the operating system is not life the merchandise that is driving the activity is not life and so because a lot of people know that their ministry cannot produce life there are other things that showcase as the product of that ministry meanwhile jesus said you cannot except by me if the goal is life then the principle has already been picked and that's why when you hear the psalmist speak sometimes he says the way of the wicked that's prophetic it means if you begin to journey on the path of wickedness your journey your movement your outcome has been judged already it's a way and the outcome of that way has already been factored out but if you want life to be a fruit unto life you will need to depend on jesus and these requirements are things that the flesh does not like the flesh doesn't want to wait the flesh wants to be in charge that dependence thing is contrary to the spirit of the fall but jesus came and modeled a new pattern if life is the goal then dependence on jesus is not optional in fact you must recognize the place of the head the place of the christ his office and his ministry and you angulate yourself and align yourself to become a victim of that office he becomes the personality that brings government that calls the shots you become that administrative setup that is is designed to carry out his decrees and you will learn how to walk like that for a long time in the book of Ephesians the Bible reveals the purpose of time the whole purpose of time you might find that somebody lived for 120 years and you might think it's an achievement but when you know what the purpose of time is you find out that length of days doesn't normally translate to meaning among the immortals because Methuselah the man that was given the opportunity to live the most the only achievement that was attributed to his name was that he was able to produce sons and daughters he never struck a chord in the realm of his reality but he became vast in the temporal primordial mundane frame of reference I want to be a carrier and a custodian of life something that you don't learn in the university and upon contact with the stream of service delivery that jesus has called me to pioneer 
men should experience transformation the proof that the Holy Ghost is at work is that what we do carries the power to transform and if there is no transformation resulting on our efforts we are transmitting from the common place and our efforts will build Babylon the principle we operate upon matters if it is ministry oh I feel the Lord descending strong this night if you are still with me say amen those who know the principle of dependence never have confidence in themselves the Bible says we are the circumcision we worship God in spirit we rejoice in Christ Jesus and we have no confidence in the flesh for you not every believer is the circumcision I know you are born again but there were three three indicators that revealed who the circumcisions are first of all the Bible says that the circumcision they worship God in spirit there are those people that God has been seeking according to the book of John chapter 4 when Jesus said that God the hour has come and now is when the true worshipers we worship God in spirit. Worship is a product of a certain dealing. A carnal man is not going to be a worshiper. Because a carnal man has confidence in his wisdom. He has confidence in his strategy. He has confidence in his connections. So a carnal man worships himself at the object, the center of activity. And if God wants to help such a carnal man, he gives him the kind of experience that God gave to Apostle Paul in Asia. Paul says, brethren, I do not want to be you to be ignorant of the peril that came to us in Asia. How that we were pressed beyond mission. We despaired of life. We prayed to die. But he now said, because spiritual knowledge came to him. The Holy Spirit spoke to him, obviously. He said, the reason why you are passing through this is not because of death. It's so that you will cease to trust yourself, but to trust him that raises from the dead. It is that place of incapacity that the Spirit of God brings us, that makes us eligible to tap into the wealth of the Holy Spirit's ministry for it is him that was designed to help our infirmity. You will never know the power of the Spirit of God until you are brought to a point where you see the end of yourself and how incompetent you are and that you are a bag of infirmities. Then your eyes are open to realize that God's plan all along was to bring you to a point where you meet with him that is the sufficiency even the spirit of god that helps infirmity and it is in the areas of your infirmity that the holy ghost will show himself strong i was born a stammerer couldn't speak if i want to communicate i'll have to beat the table and the ability to speak was not given to me and it came to pass in the encounters i had of glory God revealed to me that I was going to be a preacher and I knew that I was already a failed preacher upon arrival because I don't have the ability to communicate and I took a past and went to God and God spoke to me by laying a scripture upon my heart and he said as for you this is the covenant that I have with you I have put my words on your then he occurred to me by wisdom. The Holy Ghost by wisdom made me realize that if God has put his words in my mouth, then he will find a way to bring it up. So if I want to go preach, what I do is that I pray. I just pray enough to receive the word of the Lord and it will be God's business to bring his word to the people that he has sent me to. That was how I did my preaching. 
and for a long time i'll finish preaching i'll have the ability to speak i'll come down from the pulpit i'll become a very terrible stammer and you will see the difference between the man on the pulpit and the man on ground and the reason why the man on the pulpit is the way he is is because he met him that helps infirmity those cracks those cracks those dents of your infirmity will become an opportunity for him to show his supremacy his capacity and when you know that you will never want to try in the flesh again because the flesh has been judged only those that have had a dealing from God that exposes their insufficiency and have, have accepted it and have decided not to try in the flesh again that are the circumcision they have no confidence in the flesh and the reason why there is joy in Christ Jesus is because Jesus happens to be the source of all grace in his incarnation when he was made manifest as a man because the program that God was running was that the Son of God became the Son of Man so that sons of men can become sons of God so when he came in the suit as a man uh, he was analyzed by people that could design. Even Brother John was able to see that he was full of grace. He was full of truth. The source of grace happens to be Jesus. And so every time I preached and I had utterance, I knew the source of that grace to preach, the source of the grace to flow in utterance came from Jesus. That's his content. A little bit of his essence was released to give me the ability to speak and everyone that has operated in that immortal shape of power and capacity he, he becomes a slave to Jesus yes he becomes indebted to Jesus so he can only rejoice in Christ Jesus who happens to be his Lord and governor and it is when we have learned how to rejoice in Christ Jesus that we can actually worship the Father in the Spirit. We are the circumcision. We worship God in Spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus who happens to be our Lord and we have no confidence in the flesh. Hallelujah. Ten years after preaching that way, Jesus gave me my physical speech back. And the restoration of my speech was to test me if I was doing all of the prayer I did just because I wanted to talk. Now, the talking now came. Okay. But the lesson was already learned. The principle was one. And all the circumcision of incapacity or ability they know that any ability that doesn't have its root in spirit reinforcement it is snare. I've learned the lesson hallelujah many times before I stand like this it takes three days Lord now says, okay, I will come before I step out because he is Christ Jesus, the Lord. He can decide not to come. And you'll be standing alone on the pulpit. But the circumcision will not even go to the pulpit if, if he doesn't say he will come. Events, things, places are not as important to the circumcision like a commitment from his Lord. Hallelujah. The story has not ended. My mentor, my mentor roommate, he told me, he said, it's not good for your service. He's going straight to the field. By the time I finish your service, you'll be a bishop. Hallelujah. I don't want 
to tell you how the story ends. But the way you you are thinking it ended, that's how it ended. There are two sources. There are two principles. Satan can actually support a man that is tapping from the frequency of a wrong source in ministry. He can support him. Because what he's doing is Babylon. And the emphasis of Babylon is about greed. Meanwhile, the emphasis of the new Jerusalem is about quality control, holy. I would have punctuated to tell us the five principles of life just in case you want to swim in life there are five principles that you cannot ignore and if you don't transmit from that level your ministry is a waste of time let me jump there are also two laws because the moment we talk about life then we need to talk about laws i know you know the laws one is the law of sin unto death and the other one is the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus i don't think i need to explain this to romans chapter 7 the law of sin can we call the other law the law of paralysis paralysis is the result of a lack of grace because when god builds he builds with grace grace is the energy that god makes available when he has sustained a policy that he wants to implement upon the face of the earth, he makes grace available. And anyone that aligns to receive the grace of God will have the capacity and the ability to begin to walk in the light of God's policy. Grace is the mark of whether you are in God's current scheme of things or not. Grace was the way capacities were measured in the apostolic times because the bible says that the difference between the apostles and the other brethren was that great grace was upon them it was not by title it was not by a preferred mode of classification you couldn't deny that there was a concentration of the grace of god on those brethren something of heaven was locked on their soul you might come and say Jesus but when Apostle Paul does the same thing the result will be different the seven sons of Sceva thought it was a, a formula because I've heard many people come to me and say how did you do it and I'm wondering because that's the question for a man of a man that wants keys he doesn't want the he doesn't want the presence because it's the presence you, you don't learn the presence you don't say okay this is the formula let's enter through he wants to get keys your key holder where you are sitting now your key holder is overboarding but here the doors are locked may the lord help us in the name of jesus he wants keys how did you do it do what It's angulation. Sometimes it takes 15 years for you to angulate to that fountain of grace. And all the dealings, the governments that he administers, all the things he tells you about administering money was not about money. It was more about angulation to the energy source. The power of God will only go in the direction of the will of God. Oh, the grace of God will only go in the direction of the will of God. A heart that has not accepted God's government will be eluded with grace and the law of paralysis will set in. He can come and call himself a prophet and even sew one kind of garment. 
so that he's, he's looking where that okay this garment is a sign he came from a secret place in 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 five minutes time if you are alive in the spirit you will know he's unauthorized because he lacks grace for his claims hallelujah he is empty there is no grace to back up his claims meanwhile in the days of the apostles the bible says that what great grace is upon them so it's not by title it's by what grace that's the only thing you can buy you need to know that its source is a throne and if you don't accept the government of that throne you will not see it in such abundance that it is needed to pioneer a policy from God. Hallelujah. Oh, you are not with me. Okay, because you are not with me, I stop. I stop.